Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate video. And in today's video, I am back with another monster guide. I kicked this one off the other week with Gormagala and you guys said you really enjoyed it. So I asked you to comment on the video telling me which monster you wanted me to do next. And by far the most popular answer was Rajang. So let's do this. First up, I can understand why a lot of you asked me to cover Rajang. He can be a royal pain in the backside and does have a tendency to give even the best hunters a run for their money. As far as physiology goes, the Rajang actually strongly resembles the Blangonga from Monster Hunter Freedom 2, and it even borrows some of his attacks. However, despite that, Rajang is quite obviously much bigger, more muscly, hits a hell of a lot harder, and obviously harnesses the power of electricity or thunder as opposed to ice. Now one of Rajang's most notable moves is the one where it fires electricity from its mouth, either in a ball or in a long beam, and this is usually the one that kills people, but it's also rather easy to predict. If you watch Rajang, it's quite easy to tell when he's getting ready to do this move. So provided you're not in the middle of an attack animation or stunned, then you can quite simply either reposition yourself, roll, or perform a safety dive. A regular roll won't pass through it, so unless you have evasion plus three, then I'd recommend the dive instead. But needless to say, once you realize that it's actually quite obvious when Rajang is about to do this move, then you'll find you rarely ever get hit by it. In fact, cheesy as it is, as the saying goes, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. It's often the way in Monster Hunter that staying close to a monster is by far the easiest way to avoid being hit. And being close to Rajang makes it even easier to not only predict, but also get out of the way if he's about to perform a laser beam attack. One of his other attacks you really want to watch out for is when he jumps in the air and performs a spinning slam on the ground. In G-Rank, he'll do this three times in a row, and it hurts a lot. And while your initial instinct may be to roll out the way, I'd honestly suggest simply putting your weapon away and sprinting. See, the problem with this attack is that once he's locked onto you, he's going to keep going after you. So if you roll out of the way for the first one, there's a good chance he'll hit you before you can roll out of the second or the third. Sprinting, however, puts you just far enough away to avoid getting slammed. In the event that you do get hit, however, remain lying on the ground without touching any buttons and you'll maintain your invincibility state for a little bit longer. Usually just enough time to avoid being killed. Now when planning your assault on Rajang, it's worth taking into account that he is weakest to ice. So if you do have a weapon with this element that can take advantage of this, then you'll be doing yourself a huge favour in bringing it along with you. In previous Monster Hunter games, you actually needed an ice weapon to break Rajang's tail, but in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, it can be done with any weapon, provided it's in rage mode. And despite the fact that the tail looks like the smallest, weakest, fluffiest tail you've ever seen, it'll actually take quite a bit to break it, but it can be done. You can't cut it off, but you can break it. And speaking of breakable parts, you can also break a Rajang's horns, both of them. They're a right pain, and it'll take you a while, but if you want to get a horn in the quest rewards, then you need to break both of them, especially if you're fighting G-Rank Furious Rajang and you're after those ghoulish gold Goros. Break both horns, and you have an 80% chance to get one. So what else do you need to know? How about traps? A Rajang can be trapped using both pitfall traps and shock traps, but it will only fall into a pitfall trap when it is enraged, and the easiest way to tell is by looking at its fur. When it has spiky fur on the top of its head, and it looks like a Super Saiyan, then that is when it's enraged. But if the hair on its head is flat, whether it's black or gold, then it's not. However, just because pitfall traps are situational, don't always resort to shock traps. If you can get a Rajang in a pitfall trap, it can stay stuck for quite a while. So they are extremely effective when used at the right time. You can also flash Rajang, but people tend not to simply because it doesn't really sit still like a lot of other monsters do, but will instead jump around, in turn make it a little bit of a pain to deal with. Once you've done enough damage and the Rajang is on its last legs, it'll limp, like this. And this is your sign that it's either ready to capture, or if you're not capturing, then it's your signal that you're almost there. So lastly, having discussed some of its key moves, weaknesses, and items that do and do not work on it, the only other thing to really discuss is how to fight it. And I touched on this briefly earlier, keep it close. Rajang takes most damage from its head, as do most monsters, but quite obviously it's also where you're most vulnerable. So second to that, if you're using a cutting type weapon, then its tail is the next most vulnerable spot. While if you're using an impact weapon, it's actually the torso. So in the event that you're fighting Rajang and you have no need to break its horns, then simply stay by its side, by its hind legs, and from here, you have a great chance to trip it up by attacking the legs, but you're also near the torso, which still does decent damage. And if you know it's safe, then you're right by the tail. But in the same way that you wouldn't stand in front of its head at all times, you also don't want to stand behind it at all times, because it kicks back and that also hurts. So stick at its side, by its hind legs, and you'll not only find it much easier to avoid being hit, but you'll also be able to better anticipate what's coming. And that, my friends, is it. 
That is my guide on how to fight Rajang in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Now if you have any more questions then let me know in the comments down below and besides that also let me know in the comments down below what monster you want me to cover in my next monster guide. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out. Oh,